Hi, Blackhawks fans. Annie Kamins from the Chicago Blackhawks here with a very special guest as we celebrate the eighth annual USA Hockey's Girls Hockey Weekend. We have Kendall Coin Schofield, who is a Chicago native of ours. We have something very special to do this weekend for everybody, and Kendall is going to tell us what that is. But before I kick it over to her, make sure that you guys follow us at BH Youth Hockey on Twitter and Instagram. And also, if you have any information that you need, visit chicagoblackhawks.com slash girls hockey. Uh, Kendall, so glad that you're here. Sorry that we can't see each other in person, but uh, we're getting the Zoom call all figured out and we're so glad that you're here and that you can join us on this very special weekend and, and tell us what uh, the viewers have uh, have in store for them this weekend. Hi everyone, Kendall Coyne Schofield here, just like Coach Annie said. I'm a 2018 Olympic gold medalist, 2014 Olympic silver medalist, captain of the U.S. Women's National Team, Illinois native, Blackhawks ambassador, and I'm extremely excited for you to have the opportunity to win this signed photo of me and a signed photo of Team USA superstar and Blackhawks superstar Patrick Kane by tuning in to watch As Fast As Her this Sunday. Kendall, before we go and we tune into this awesome As Fast As Her viewing, tell us a little bit about what it was like to be at the All-Star Game, the first woman to compete in the All-Star competition. It was an incredible moment to become the first woman to compete in the NHL All-Star Skills Competition in the Fastest Skater Competition. And for those of you that have seen me play, maybe you've been on the ice with me and I've coached you, you know how exciting skating gets me. So skating's always been my strength as a player. So to be able to you know, shine my speed and my skating abilities on one of the biggest stages I've ever been on at the NHL All-Star Weekend was extremely exciting. Actually, I remember being so nervous. Patrick Kane, who was also there, he came out to me and he said Kendall you got this and I remember thinking to myself I do got this and so I got to the red line I said you got this move your feet as fast as you can enjoy the moment and the SAP Center in San Jose California erupted and they started chanting USA and the horn went off and I just skated as fast as I can just like you'll watch and as fast as her and the rest is history oh what an awesome moment and one of the most exciting games that that, that you know men and women watch and just to have a woman out there I mean imagine what what this is going to do for the future generations and I'm sure that's a lot of what you thought about right absolutely and I know I've heard from so many of you young boys and girls who are playing hockey who said I skated my own lap and I skated it this fast or I want to play hockey or you started playing hockey because you saw that moment and that's what made that moment so exciting for me and I hope you all continue to play the game you love the game I know we're not on the ice as much as we want to be right now but we'll get back out there stay positive and most importantly have fun that's why I still play the game that's why we see all of our favorite Blackhawks playing the game every day is because we love the game so make sure anytime you play you love the game Oh, that's such great closing words from our superstar, Kendall Coyne Schofield. Make sure you follow us at BH Youth Hockey on Twitter and Instagram and go to blackhawks.com slash girls hockey if you have any questions or have resources you need to, to look up. Uh, the Blackhawks and uh, Kendall are both so appreciative and uh, so glad you guys joined us this weekend. First event will be the Bridgestone Fastest Skater. Up first will be the 2018 gold medalist from the U.S. Women's Olympic Team, Kendall Coyne. I think we're still figuring it out, what it meant. We're learning new things every day, new developments, new barriers that are being broken because of that moment. Watch the feet move there. The angles are terrific. The edge work is outstanding. Having a moment like that, it's teaching the future generations of our game that gender doesn't matter. Everyone plays the same game and they love the game. What was so special to me was to hear from so many people, thousands and thousands of young people, boys and girls, who picked up the sport because they saw that moment or they said, I want to be as fast as her. They see that as talent, they see it as skill and they want to embody that.
our son Kevin was what, about six, we signed him up for a learn to skate. And when he's playing minor mite hockey, we had signed Kendall up for figure skating. I don't think she lasted a week. She came up to me as little tiny three-year-old three -year yeah. and in her little broken three-year-old voice said, I need the sport. I'm like, you're three. How do you, she goes, I want to do what Kevin's doing. Like, okay, fine. As a little girl, she always was where the puck was going to be. She always stopped it. She was very, very young. And then she got in the car and I said, Kendall, how'd you always stop it? She goes, oh, Mr. DeVork only had two plays. What? She goes, oh yeah, so I knew when the winger went here or this one here, I just went and waited for the boys to come. So she just, she just had that. She saw things. That's just God given because she didn't get it from us. Yeah. <laughs> and the rest is why we're here today. She made herself a hockey player. Yeah, that's true. That's a jersey I wore when we won, which is pretty cool. Um, I think what's really cool about that moment is it never leaves you. So you can recollect it in a split second and bring yourself back in a split second because the memories are just so ingrained. I just, I can't believe I was a part of it. I can't believe that I was able to, you know, win an Olympic gold medal, let alone just be in the Olympics. So it's pretty much the coolest feeling that you could ever have as an athlete. I first met Kendall at my hockey school when she was just a little, she must have been seven, eight years old. I don't even know how old, but little. I remember seeing her gold medal. She pulled it out of her hockey bag. And that's when it hit me that I'm like, okay, so girls win gold medals and boys win Stanley Cups. Not really understanding what she had just accomplished and what the Olympics really were at six and seven years old. Um, but I remember being like, okay, so she's the best. I want it. I want one of those. So Bart still has it around Tegan. Around low shoot scores. Growing up for me, I looked at the Chicago Blackhawks as my idols. I wanted to be Dennis Vard or I wanted to play on the Blackhawks. I think that was in my yearbook for grade seven. I was going to be the first woman to play on the Blackhawks. So that was my dream. I didn't have female role models in hockey. We got on a world stage, we won a gold medal, and we came home to this, this massive uh, interest and rush of like people wanting to know more about us. And so having 100 girls show up to our hockey camp was unheard of, was just unheard of. So it was just amazing to see that these young girls now are the product of that, you know, that team winning. And it's, uh, it's very cool that we are part of that. If I didn't meet her at that time, I have no idea what dreams or desires or goals I would have had in life. I mean, meeting her prompted me to chase something that would change my life forever. There was a time in my youth career that I thought about quitting hockey because I was getting made fun of, getting called a tomboy, getting told to go do what normal girls do and you don't belong and getting cut from teams because I was a girl. I hated when parents would whisper and point fingers at me and I'd walk in the rink. I, I didn't like going into the women's bathroom to change. It was a different time and um, I had to deal with a lot of that, but nothing ever kept me from going, like stopping. I just didn't want to quit. And I just had a confidence that, and a drive and a love for the game that just kept me going. I would hear from the parents, hit her, take her out, she's horrible, she's a girl, literally constant. There's a lot of loneliness when you're the only girl. You watch all the guys go in the locker room, have a great time, socialize, and you go in a storage closet by yourself. I'm constantly opening the door to see, okay, is the Zamboni out, or are the guys out there yet? Oh, oh Kendall's digging in, she scores! Oh, with point one left on the board. I think having her really opened everyone's eyes. She pushed the pace, you know, sometimes. You know, kids don't really want to be out there, and um, she'd come out and, and embarrass people sometimes, and it made everyone try to work harder, and I think she's brought that with her uh, everywhere she goes. She brings that motivation and that, you know, when you don't quite have it, someday you see someone like her pushing the pace, and it makes you want to elevate your game. When I made that jump to play AAA boys, all of the guys just, they looked at me as an equal. They didn't care. You noticed the work ethic right away. Um, we'd always see her in the gym. Uh, doing extra stuff. 
It was almost like she was a rink manager and she pretty much worked at the rink. I wouldn't be surprised if she had a key. As long as you're out there to play hockey and you're there to compete, get better, work on your craft, they don't care. Kendall Coyne being from Palos Heights, uh, I did a lot of the majority of my growing up in Palos Heights. Uh, without question, Kendall Coyne's the greatest hockey player ever to come out of Palos Heights, Illinois, and uh, I'm proud to say that. When I was 15, I went to national camp. That was the moment that I realized I can do this. I'm far off, but I'm not that far off. I just remember coming home so fueled that, you know, I can do this. I want to make the Olympic team. I want to be on that national team. It's been really amazing to just watch her from that little girl to where she is now. Here goes uh, Kendall and shoot and score! Kendall's back 1v1. Coin in and she <laughs> scores! Oh my Coin all alone! And a goal for Team USA! Sweet victory at the Olympics. Team USA taking home gold for the first time in two decades. A gorgeous January night in Silicon Valley and downtown San Jose where hockey fans from near and far have joined together to cheer on the biggest stars in today's game. I was invited by the NHL to demonstrate a drill uh, for the All-Star Weekend. I remember wanting to do the fastest skater for fun. Then all of a sudden, Nathan McKinnon gets hurt. He can't skate. I got a call from Patrick Burke saying, you're going to be the first woman to compete in the NHL All-Star Skills Competition. And I almost fell over. <laughs> So my phone rang, and I'm thinking, why would she be calling me? She goes, in typical Kendall, hi, I don't have time to talk. I'm about to be the first woman to participate in the skill, like, and I'm, about to, I'm about to do it. I'm about to compete in the skills competition. Yep, 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 like the real thing. I got to take a shower. I got to go to the rink. I got to go. Just tell Dad. And I'm like, what? OK. You have the weight of the sport on your shoulders right now, and really embrace this moment, enjoy this moment, and prove to the world that women belong in the sport of hockey. Kendall Coyne up first. Her first couple steps and how fast she is, everyone's kind of looking around at each other. Come on, Kendall. Come on, Kendall. Go, 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 go. <laughs> Move your legs as fast as they can go. They're not very long, but just move them like you know how to. Kendall Coyne in the home stretch. 14.346. That moment, it wasn't how it was skated, who skated it. It was the platform it was skated on, and that was the platform within the National Hockey League. They created that platform, and we took advantage of it. For her to be the first one to do that and compete against men and hold her own and end up beating someone as well, I think uh, speaks volume about how fast she is as a skater. She had one opportunity. You can either blow it or make it, and she made it. She broke a barrier that I don't think anyone could foresee. It's, it's epic. Like, what she did was epic. Like, you just can't script it any better. It was more than just a, a race. It was so much bigger than that for women's hockey. We talk about the Olympics and a gold medal and what a gold medal can do, but that moment was also a gold medal. That moment was historic. You've talked in a really interesting way about how hard it can be to continue getting visibility as a hockey player. Yeah, it's really challenging and I think it's something that Olympic athletes struggle in general with is people only feel that we're relevant every four years. When to us, the Olympics aren't every four years, they're every day. Where we struggle is that, um, and I think women struggle, all women struggle with this, is people want to see our face. Yeah. And we wear a cage. So how are we relevant to that marketer? Because all the consumer wants to see is how pretty you are, not how good of an athlete you are. To see Kendall get the recognition uh, that she's been getting is so wonderful because I, she comes off to me as is, is so understated. And now what we're seeing is her coming to life with a voice as well and sharing you know, what they've had to go through with hockey and what they continue to fight for. The ESPNW Summit was excellent to be a part of, but when are we done having these conversations? 
know, when are we done going to events like that and having to talk about the same thing we've been talking about for 20 and 30 years? Here we are in 2019 trying to create something that has been earned already. Did you get more opportunities coming out of this because of that increased visibility? Absolutely. For today, as I mentioned, so it's we're straight up at six, following the NHL now. Looking forward to game seven. I would expect them to be lights out. And we welcome you into our studios, NHL Tonight. I'm Keith Rosari, Darren Pang, and Kettle Coin Schofield with me. Guys, game seven is clearly on our minds. She possesses a, a, a real different look to the game of hockey. and. Uh, Hockey's hockey. You put on the skates and you play and you compete, and uh, and so she's got a wealth of knowledge. And I think these are the moments that you want to play for. You've been in so many elimination games in your life, and nothing better than that. Absolutely. And you talk about grind. If there's two teams that have grinded their way to be here tonight, it's these two, and no one wants to go away with not winning. And we talked about how great John Klingberg was in the start of this game, and he's proved it all along. He's a phenomenal hand and a phenomenal opportunity. In my opinion, the Blackhawks have been pioneers and leaders in supporting the women's game, more so than any other organization in the NHL. They've really shown that they care about the game. They don't care that my uniform doesn't say Blackhawks. They know I'm one of them. Good job, good job, go shoot, go shoot. Kendall does an amazing job in the community and she helps out so much with our Blackhawk youth hockey camps. She's been a great ambassador, not only for, uh, for women's hockey, but for, uh, for hockey in general. And it's pretty amazing to see what she's done and how far she's come in, in those few years that I've known her. I'm a firm believer if you build it, they'll come. And I'm so honored that the Blackhawks wanted to do this with me because they really have set the standard in the NHL market of how to grow the game. Not just the men's or the boys' side, but the women's and the girls' side. I've been really fortunate to accomplish a lot of the goals and dreams I've set for myself, whether that's you know, winning an Olympic gold medal, playing in seven world championships. Hockey has brought me so many incredible experiences I never would have dreamed of when I was three years old and I put on figure skates. Now that I've been able to accomplish that, my mission in this game is to leave the game better than it was. We all have role models. I think the reality for young people is, is well, look, if, if Kendall Coyne can do it, you know, why, why can't I do it? Kendall's unbelievable how she thinks about the future generations. She's always saying, what we're going to do now is going to be for the future generations. That's leadership. They don't just think about themselves. I think the one thing that has impressed me so much with Kendall is she represents all of us with great dignity and, and pride. But to be able to do what she's done on the ice has just been, uh, it's been spectacular. And I, think, I, st I still think there's a few chapter or chapters to be uh, written in that, uh, in that book. The way she's trying to change the game and what she's trying to do to better the game is just something tremendous. She makes every single girl feel so special because Cammy did that to her. I feel great that I played a part in it for her. She was on a trajectory to go be successful with something because I mean, she, she loved the game. She had massive like passion and desire and work ethic and just that's what she loved to do. She reminded me of myself. That's all I lived and breathed the game and that's kind of how she is. I always think what if I never met Cami Granado? What if she didn't she didn't need to host a girls camp? She was the face of the organization. She had every endorsement. You know, she was successful, but she gave back and she changed the lives of so many young girls, many of whom put a gold medal around their neck last February. And so to know the power you can have by being an accessible role model is so important to me. And it's a lot of work, but to see the smiles on the kids' faces and to hear how much they love the game and to see them year after year and watching them grow and um, is, is so worth it. Are you girls excited? Yeah, yeah I am too. Hello. You're racing me? Yeah, me too. It's gonna be a tight one.
I know she'll go down in history of not only an all-time great as far as on the ice, but as a leader off the ice and making the difference for girls to have a place to play and to make a living and to be appreciated for their accomplishments. To see the amount of girls playing, like, I can't put it into words. Like, I think about being so lonely in the rinks, like, my whole childhood, not seeing other girls, and then, like, just seeing the growth of the game, it shows that, like, we're worth something. And Cam, you heard she wasn't worth anything. I've heard I'm not worth anything. And I think I continue to fight and play this game so that these little girls aren't told they're not worth anything. I started playing hockey when I was six at the Glenview Ice Rink for the Stars. I've been skating since I was two. My favorite part about playing hockey is probably the battle drills in the corner. My teammates and getting to travel with them everywhere. It's so fun just like working with everybody and meeting new people. I love skating and I love shooting. When I grow up, I want to make it to college and just be the best person I can be, doing all the good for people. I want to be an Olympic gold medalist when I grow up. When I grow up, I want to take hockey as far as I can. I want to be an Olympic hockey player like Kendall Coyne. Maybe one day play the Olympics like she did. Olympic hockey player. That's like Kendall Coyne. I want to be as fast as her.